New features about this better product are advertised to point out its competitive advantages. The Auto Magic Permafreeze with plenty of room for groceries galore. The Auto Magic Permafreeze with the super duper store a man in door. Just press the button for your ice. A feature that is new and extra space all over the place for other items too. In the Auto Magic Permafreeze. So see your dealer right away. Get a Permafreeze today. Ah, yes, dear lady. Permafreeze is your kind of refrigerator. High, high quality at a low, low price. Sales dollars from satisfied customers once again flow back to Permafreeze. A successful business must have enough sales dollars coming in to enable management to pay the expenses of doing business, such as salaries and wages, materials and supplies, research and product development, plant maintenance and repair. In addition to all of these bills, management has to pay taxes to local, state, and federal governments. Any money that's left over is known as profit. Wise management plows part of it back into the business. The remainder of the profit is paid out as dividends. These dividends are sent back to investors as a reward for risking their savings in the American business system. Although occasionally some of us pick a lemon and have to take a loss. The constant investment of our savings through good times and bad has enabled our competitive business system to continue to increase the production of more and better goods to meet the demands of our rising population for a better standard of living. For example, it was only a little more than half a century ago that the average worker had only inefficient tools to help him turn out a product. Low production meant low wages. In 1900, many men had to work 10 hours a day, six days a week, to earn enough money to provide their families with the bare essentials. Hand labor was the rule in the home as well as the factory. In many families, the youngsters had to work to add their earnings to the family budget and forego the opportunity to get an education. And with most families in those days, the standard of living left much to be desired. A half century later, we had invested enough in our business system to provide the average worker with efficient and expensive buildings and machinery to enable him to produce enough in a 40-hour week to earn twice as much as the 1900 worker earned in a 60-hour week. This shorter work week gives us all more leisure time to enjoy a standard of living beyond the wildest dreams of anyone who lived a half century ago. The more we earn, the more our families have to spend for the things they need and want. Young people today have leisure time for fun and enjoy educational opportunities denied their fathers and grandfathers. And fortunately, we have been able to raise our standard of living without sacrificing the spiritual side of life, which means so much to the American family. Our business system has continued to provide a better life for our increasing population, in spite of destructive forces which have pounded against our foundation of freedoms with no avail. However, wars, or the threat of wars, interrupt the normal operations of our competitive business system. may result in government controls which crack essential blocks in our foundation of freedoms. In World War II, wages were controlled. Many workers were frozen to their jobs. Farm prices were controlled. And profits of business were limited. Raw materials were allocated. 
between essential and non-essential business. On Main Street, USA, many of us found less to buy because a good portion of our productive capacity went to the war effort. Prices were fixed, and the available supply of goods was rationed. In war emergencies, we allow government to restrict certain of our freedoms. But we Americans have learned to remove government controls as quickly as possible and to repair the blocks and the foundation of our freedoms to allow our business system to resume its normal operations. While we invest part of our savings to help finance the world's most efficient business system, at the same time we pay taxes to government to finance many kinds of services which also contribute to our way of life. For example, our taxes must provide the necessary funds to improve and expand our school system. Our taxes must be sufficient to pay for city streets, health, fire, and police protection, and of course, aid to the needy. Our state taxes help pay for highways, educational institutions, and among other things, help to finance important experiments to increase the productivity of our farms. Our federal taxes pay for irrigation and reclamation projects, for national parks, postal services, the Weather Bureau and many other services. Our taxes have to pay for the enormous cost of past wars and provide the funds for a defense program which will ensure the safety of our country. In addition, all of us should be willing to pay whatever taxes are necessary to enable efficient government to improve or expand any essential service. But with our present tax load, we should avoid pressuring government for any new services that aren't absolutely necessary. Because we all know, the more our government provides, the more taxes it's forced to collect. None of us can escape. Big business. Small business. Farmers. Workers. Housewives and all of us have to pay our share. Demanding more and more from government could create a tax burden heavy enough to crack essential blocks in the foundation of our business system. Therefore, we shouldn't let our taxes reach a point where they destroy our ability to save and invest. For, as we have seen, our rising standard of living depends upon a constant flow of savings dollars into our business system each year. In the future of our country, waves of destructive forces will continue to batter against our foundation. When any force weakens the interlocked blocks of our political and economic freedoms, as good citizens we must be quick to use the tools our Constitution gives us and repair any cracks that may appear. As long as we keep the foundation of our business system strong, we shall be able to maintain and improve the way of life our forefathers conceived and established. A way of life which gave everyone who came to this country the chance to progress according to his ability and enterprise. Like the youth of yesterday, the young people of today deserve the same opportunity to earn success and accomplishment. And on this foundation of freedoms, continue to build a better life for themselves and their fellow man in the world of tomorrow.